how's it going? My name is Weston, and today I'm gonna to be animating photos inside of Procreate for the iPad Pro. This is a really cool trick that you can use to help bring some fun and flair to the photos that you take for social media. So hopefully you guys can follow along and learn something new and hopefully create some fun animated photos of your own. So of course, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up Procreate on your iPad. Um, when you get inside Procreate, you're gonna wanna go to the top right-hand corner where the little plus icon is. This is gonna bring you into the new canvas menu. We're gonna go ahead and click to create a new canvas. Since I'm gonna be creating an animation to post to Instagram, I wanna make my canvas size 1080 by 1350. This is gonna be the highest resolution that Instagram allows for portrait photos. Um, so this will take up the most amount of room on someone's feed and be the highest quality um, for your photo. So once you have your canvas set up, we're going to go ahead and create it and that's going to open you straight into a new document. If you click on the layers pan panel, you'll see that uh, layer one doesn't have anything on it. And of course we need our photo. So I'm going to go over to the wrench icon and click add. Um, here you're going to see an option to insert a photo and it'll take you straight to your photo gallery inside your iPad. <clears throat> I have a photo that I took yesterday for this uh, exact project. So I'm just going to pull that in and it's already set to my 13 uh, by 50, 1080 uh, size, 1350 by 1080 size. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, and this is a really important thing, you're going to want to click on your layers panel and create a new layer. Um, this is gonna be so that we don't actually do any um, damage to our photo. Um, we don't wanna make any changes that we can't go back and undo. So by creating a new layer, um, we're able to draw on top of our photo without actually um, messing with the photo itself. So make sure you make your new layer. Next, uh, to set ourselves up to go ahead and start animating, we're gonna go back to the wrench icon. We're gonna click on canvas and inside canvas, you'll see a toggle to uh, turn on animation assist. So we're gonna switch that on. And as you'll see, our photo um, became a little less opaque. The opacity was dropped down and that's because we've created a new animation layer. If we click back on our photo, we can actually set our photo to be our background layer, and this will allow your photo to exist throughout the entire animation. Um, from here, we'll be able to draw on it, add a frame, add a frame, and then play our animation. Uh, this way, the photo always exists in the background and will just be a permanent part of the animation. So we wanna be sure to do that. Um, so usually whenever I'm starting an animation for a photo, I'll kind of like to start out um, by just doodling kind of what I'm thinking for the animation, just kind of, you know, draw on the photo itself and kind of like plan out um, the look for an animation. Um, the reason why I posed my photo the way that I did here is because my plan is to create an animation that has this kind of like flame effect. Um, I want to make it look as though I'm holding this animated flame. So in order to do that, um, I'm actually going to set up my brushes real quick. Uh, you want to be sure that you have, um, I specifically like using the monoline brush. It's a nice even brush, um, but you can use any brush you want. Um, I, I like to select monoline and then I'm going to be using um, pretty much white throughout the entire animation because my photo is a little bit darker, so the white will really stand out, but you can use any color you'd like. So to get started, I know that I wanna create an animation that kind of moves up my arm and then creates the um, fire effect. So what I'm gonna do is I have a frame um, ready to go. <clears throat> I'm gonna go in here and create um, a circle or an oval shape. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna use this as kind of a shape that's gonna animate in and look like it's moving up my arm and charging up this fire. So I have uh, my first oval in. 
uh, that's going to be the first frame of my animation. And now I'm going to add a frame. And what happens is, oh, you know what? I actually just drew on my layer. Don't do that. Let me undo real quick. See, I just made the mistake I said not to do. So we're going to make my, my photo, the background layer again, and make sure we're on layer two. Make sure you're on layer two. You don't want to draw on your photo. So let me just repeat what I did. I'm going to make an oval. That looks good. I'm going to take that oval and I can use this arrow key to kind of adjust it to be exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to kind of center it to my arm. And what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping on the screen and this is going to allow me to just make very small adjustments to my illustration. So that looks good. Okay, so we have my very first frame and actually now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go up with it a little bit. And you'll see why in just a second. Cool. So we have our first frame. Now I'm going to click add frame. And as you see, our first layer dropped down in opacity a little bit. And that's because I have these onion skins set up. I'm going to move my onion skin to be one frame. And basically that's going to allow me to see the frame that came before and the frame that's coming afterwards. Uh, I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit as well. So now whenever I go in and I start creating my very next frame, Let's just undo that. Creating another frame. There we go. So now I have frame one and frame two. And when we play between these, you'll see this is what's now creating the motion of my animation. Now I'm going to go into my settings and I'm actually going to turn my frames per second down just a little bit. Um, I like to put it somewhere in between eight frames and 12 frames. This is basically how many frames that are going to play per second. So this is eight frames per second. Um, so now it should be a little bit slower of an animation. So I'm just going to repeat this process and then I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I've gone in and I've created all the circles. And if we play it back, um, it looks like these, these oval shapes are moving up my arm. So what we're gonna do next is actually a cool trick that um, Procreate allows you to do. We're gonna go and take our eraser tool. It's this third icon um, in the corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into each of these ovals and I'm essentially just going to erase away the parts of my illustration that I don't want to see. And the reason I'm doing this is it's creating the illusion that the oval shapes are going around my arm. Um, so I'm going to go into each layer and I'm just going to repeat this process. And when we do this, it should look like this, this ring is basically moving straight up my arm. Um, as it's also wrapped around. All right, so now I have erased parts of the shape that give the illusion that this ring is actually wrapped around my arm and moving up my arm. So cool. All right, the next step is these rings are essentially charging up this flame that I'm gonna create uh, coming from my hand. So what I wanna do is create another frame and I'm gonna start to draw in the, draw in the beginnings of this like flame that's being created. So I'm just going to kind of draw around my finger 
because I want it to look as though it's starting to come in behind my hand. So we're just gonna kind of draw this shape in. I might add some like little little speckles like that. Might get a little closer to my finger. That's what's so great about the iPad is you can just like really get in to the detail. Okay, so now we're gonna add a, add a frame and continue to build on the shape of the flame. So now I'm gonna come up here a little bit. Maybe it starts to kind of look like a flame. And then this is moving up just a little. So when you're creating these animations, you really need to like think about the movement of what you're trying to make and think about like capturing that movement just like in a snapshot. And the, uh, the onion skin feature um, really helps with this because it allows you to see what the previous shape looked like and you can just kind of like build off of that. So now I'm gonna add another frame and now we're really, we're really gonna move this flame forward because I want it to seem like now it's, it's moving fairly quickly. Um, I know it may not super look like a flame right now, but that's okay. I'm gonna kind of adjust this a little bit. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, these, these frames are gonna be moving fairly quickly, so you're only gonna see them for a second. Not even a second. So here I'm just continuing to build the shape of the flame. You can take your color swatch tool and draw it to help fill in some shapes. That's a really quick way of doing it. Um, I'm just gonna go in here and tweak this just a little, but I'm moving fairly fast so that you guys can see kind of how this process works. Um, normally I would go in and be a lot more detailed with it, but for time's sake, we're just gonna keep chugging along just creating that, that flame look. I'm gonna do one more and then we'll pause and see how it's looking. That's a really good thing to do uh, when you're creating animations, just every now and then pausing to kind of see what the animation is looking like. It helps a ton. So let's play it. Cool, so we got the ring moving up my arm and then it kind of creates this flame from my hand. I'm gonna go in and make the fire animation a little longer, that way it, it lasts, um, a, a, has a longer duration to it. So we're gonna go to the very last frame and we're just gonna keep continuing to build up the flame. The um, longer you want your animation to be, since mine is gonna be looping, I'm just gonna have to keep creating um, frames um, if your animation is, is fairly simple though, there are ways, which I'll show you in just a sec. You can actually go into the um, settings and there are different animation types that you can do. Um, so this one is a loop. This basically means it's just gonna play my animation over and over again in a loop. You can also set your animation to be a uh, ping pong, which means it'll basically play and then play in reverse. So you're seeing here, it's going up, doing the flame, and then it's going back down. Um, that's cool for, um, there are certain instances where that works really well. For this though, I think I'm going to keep it as a loop animation, um, just because I want the flame to kind of go, burn, and then maybe, maybe like diffuse a little bit. So we're just gonna keep creating that.
Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and start to diffuse the flame a little bit. So we're gonna shrink the size now. So we're gonna make it just gradually kind of get a little smaller as though the flame's kind of burning out now. All right, so we have our entire animation finished. Let's go ahead and play it back and see what it looks like. We have the rings going up my arm and creating the energy that you know starts this little flame that I'm holding, and this will just loop and loop forever. So what I can actually do now that this is finished, I'm gonna go over to the wrench icon. I'm gonna click on share. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as an animated MP4. What this is gonna do is allow me to actually upload it to Instagram. And because it's, um, it's gonna be a shorter duration than 15 seconds, it'll actually loop infinitely on Instagram. So uh, looking at max resolution, make sure it's set to max resolution. I'm gonna put it actually maybe like 10 frames per second. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just gonna click export. And from there, um, I can send it actually, I can actually send it straight to my phone. So I'm gonna make sure my phone's turned on. I'm gonna click airdrop and I'm gonna just select my iPhone. And there you go. Now we have this animation. Oh, I don't know if you can see it on my phone. Boom. And you can just upload that straight to Instagram. And like I said, it should play infinitely and you are good to go. This is a really awesome tool because there are a ton of fun things that you can do on all sorts of photos. Um, here, this is a animation I did on a photo of my girlfriend. You know, she was just sitting on this curb outside, uh, took a photo of her and it was really cool. But just adding these little bits of animation really add to the photo and help make them a little more fun and a little more interesting. So I challenge you to give it a try. Take a photo of yourself, take a photo of a friend, grab a photo from the internet. It doesn't matter. Just throw it into Procreate and try making some sort of animation. Um, if you end up uploading one to Instagram, be sure to tag me in it. I'd love to see what you create. You can find me at, at Westosaurus. Um, so be sure to share your work. But thanks so much for being here. I will see you in the next one.